So if you were to structure a program, what do you think the main focus of one of these quant masters should be here? Like what is, what are programs working towards as the main, I guess, driver of one of these programs? Yeah, so I'm thinking, of course, about master's programs, not undergraduate. And um, I do see the role of these master's programs as a, as a terminal degree. And so to structure a program, I do actually dynamically program my way backwards from, uh, from when students graduate to basically when they apply. And um, so the um, a set of questions one naturally wants to answer is, you know, when would a student graduate and what would you expect them to know when they graduate? And um, I, I, you know, because I do see, I come from industry and I do see these master's degrees as essentially preparing students for a role after they graduate in the financial industry. Um, you know, first, when they graduate is actually something that you need to think about. And um, I would say in my experience, there's kind of um, hiring seasons and um, tends to be more in the first half of the year than the second. And um, so you sort of ideally have people ready to, to go to start work in the first half of any given year. And um, so then, you know, one thinks about how long it should be. And, um, you know, there's sort of natural constraints on the question in the sense that it's, you know, I don't think you can get away with anything less than a year. And yeah. I don't think you can get away with anything more than two years. <laughs> so it's kind of like in between, you know, one year and two years and um, ours is two but with the ability to graduate in a year and a half if you work really hard at it. But, um, and I, I do tend to lean towards taking longer than taking shorter within that, that interval, uh, just because um, you're gonna be in competition with graduates from other programs. So the more you know when you graduate, the better off you are. <laughs> and um, so even though I, you know, I understand time value of money and opportunity costs and all that, but um, you know, I figure you know, uh, the, uh, you know, compared to, you know, an undergrad degree, as we all know, is four years. So, you know, I mean, a typical master's degree is, is actually closer to two than one year. And um, so ours is like that too. So I, that's why I tend to favor it. I just think there's a lot of material. And um, also like it's getting ever more diverse, let's say. So um, you're, you're bringing in people from diverse backgrounds and then also teaching them an ever wider set of things. So, so it does take longer to do all that. So anyway, then we get to the, of course, the, the nitty gritty question, you know, what should the curriculum be? And, you know, let's say um, there is, you know, an easy way to answer that in a sense is look at the intersection of what everybody else is offering and offer that at a minimum and then, you know, tailor around the edges. And, you know, so, so we just simply did that. I mean, there's, um, you know, these programs all kind of grew out of, let's say, derivatives pricing on the sell side, but they've actually graduated, they've actually moved quite a bit away from that initial start. But let's say the sort of fundamentals still need to be taught, and what would those be? Well, in my opinion, um, you know, like the prerequisites, for example, for our program just coming in, and then we would tend to continue along these, these roads is the prerequisites are probability, statistics, linear algebra, multivariate calculus, and programming. And, um, you know, we basically continue down every one of those roads. Um, you know, a prerequisite is not finance or economics, and we, we teach that in the master's program. And, um, but we, you know, we do so using those tools I just mentioned. You know, so the main thing that probably that people won't have at the undergrad level, but do need at the master's level is um, like stochastic calculus, you know, and I think that, let's say, as I was, you know, saying to you before we started, it's like it's, uh, uncertainty is endemic to finance. I mean, finance is essentially study of, of how to think about, you know, the passage of time under uncertainty. <laughs> and um, so, so you, you, let's say, have to uh, have, you know, basic understanding of how to think about um, uncertainty under your belt by the time you graduate or else forget about it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and so, so actually, you know, that's an important point because many of the more fashionable things um, were actually developed, let's say, for in other realms 
where uncertainty is less of an issue. You know, so when we teach machine learning, for example, you know, we're, we're always stressing the application to finance, especially taking into account, you know, the, the fact that we're actually small data and um, that there's a lot of noise. So, so anyway, um, you know, the, but as it, you know, still speaking about curriculum, again, the key thing is that people be prepared for their interviews and, um, you know, what's asked during interviews? Well, sometimes it's brain teasers, which are, you know, let's say <laughs> typically we don't teach it during the curriculum, but um, actually, you know, you will also get domain expertise questions. And um, often those are meant as a screen, meaning they'll ask what they think is a simple question. If you can't answer it well, the interview's over. <laughs> <laughs>